Welcome to the car guys. This week we're talking about the things we hate the most about cars. It's going to be shocking. All right, so here's my thing. Yep. Here's one of the things I dislike. Off center number plate. Oh, yes. Right, now why do I hate off center? Do you know what? I like symmetry on a car. Number plate should be in the middle. Yep. Lights each side. Why would you why would you offset a number plate? On purpose. On purpose. I mean, the back of the new Discovery. Yeah, we're looking I at mean, you, Land Rover, Jaguar, Land Rover thingy. It looks like you've had a stroke, yeah. the poor thing. Yeah, it's, it's truly the most ugly back of a car ever. And they did it on purpose. In theory, they did it because you're going to put like a wheel on there or, or it's meant to be designed for the wheel, but That's no one ever does. I bet no one ever does. And then you've got Alfa Romeos, which have always got the most beautiful oh. front ever. And then when they come over here, they go, well, where do we put the number plate? And they go, That's all right, we'll just put it over on the left. We'll just stick it on the side. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just had it there, like, like a little side salad. <laughs> It's like a little bowl of coleslaw. That's what it is. <laughs> no one ever eats the bowl of coleslaw. Ever. Windscreen wipers, if you're of a certain age, this is how windscreen wipers are supposed to work. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. what they do. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. They clean all the water. Easy. Sometimes yeah. you've got two. Yeah. Or if you're in a, you know, 917, it does this. Okay? Yeah. What yeah. it shouldn't do is this. Oh, no. Why, did it do, why does it do that? It shouldn't do this. No, that's wrong. Shouldn't do that. Uh, no. Ford, no. And also, strangely, almost all French manufacturers, no. Yeah. Why'd you do it? No. Why? Stop. Why'd you do it? Stop. It's annoying. Desist. So here's another thing I find slightly irksome. Slightly irksome? Slightly irksome. Are you joking? Yeah. Key to entry. In theory, it's a good idea. The keys are massive now. Yeah. Because they've got huge batteries in them to activate the key that's bloody entry. It looks like you've got a semi the whole time. Continuously. So you've got this thing stuffed in your pocket, you walk up to the car, you put your hand on the door handles and it opens. Right? Good thing. So you complete your journey, you get out the other end, close the door, you walk away, you go, oh, did I lock the car? And you walk back and you touch the door handle and it opens again. And you go, oh, no, I'll lock it. And then you go, oh, am I sure I locked that? Come back, what happens? Car unlocks again. Unless, now here's the thing, BMWs, you can turn the kiddest entry off. Do you know why? Because that's how BMWs get stolen. <laughs> you put the keys in your house, you think they're nice and secure, they're not near the front door. No one's going to stick a fishing rod through here and yeah. yank me keys out. I'll just stick them over there where no one can see them. They don't care, do they? What do they do? They just walk up to your car because your keys are already in range. They touch the door and open it and they're off. <laughs> when you drive away, it, the car will go yeah, oh, kind of... I can't recognise the key. Yeah. Doesn't stop the car, does no. it? No. No. Just gives you a nice subtle warning. Yeah. Not sure if you've got the key with you. Are you sure you've got the key? Have you got oh, the key? Are you a robber? Yeah. It's keyless entry, so you've got to have a key. And is it really that bad that you've got to get in a car and put a key in and turn it versus get in a car with the key? Or in Ferrari's case, get in the car with a key and then put your key in a little sheath. I no, I don't. I don't know what the benefit of it is. Auto full beam headlights. I hate this. This is one of your proper. Ones, I hate this, right? This is this is supposedly an invention to take away stress, to take to, to help you when you're driving the car. Yeah. The problem is, you when you have full beam auto full beam headlights on, you spend your every minute driving the car thinking, why hasn't it come on yet? Is it going to come on? When's it about when to come on? come on? What's going on? It hasn't come on yet. I mean, I'm in a dark place. Why hasn't it come on yet? And you're just constantly focused on why the full beam has not come on yet, or even worse, it's on full beam. You can see there's another car coming and it hasn't turned, it off. Hasn't turned off. So that other guy's going, what the hell's Whoa, going on, you idiot? And he's flashing you. Yeah. And you're going, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, it's my car. And then you've got to reach to try and find, where's the off switch for the, for the lights? Because it has literally got a mind of its own. So that neatly segues me into another automatic feature of modern cars that gets on my nerves. Auto windscreen wipers. Oh, really? Now, in essence, you think, oh, that's a pretty good feature. I haven't got to worry. I just turn them on. Mm. There's two problems with that. Number one, when the windscreen's completely iced over because you forgot to turn them off from the day before, you end up ripping the arms <laughs> off of the windscreen wipers. The rubber goes... <laughs> You can smell the motor burning out as it's desperately trying to pull the things across. The other thing is, they never swipe when you want them to. No. So you're sitting there, the windscreen's getting more and more covered in yeah, water. You can, you can hard... see less and less. 
you go to push down, you go, oh, it's never gonna swipe. You go to push down and they swipe. It's almost like they're waiting for you to do it. What was wrong with intermittent windscreen wipers? What yeah. was wrong with that? Yeah. We didn't need auto, did we? No, no one needed it. Because the problem with an auto thing is you leave it on. So you, you, yes. don't, you don't go, oh, it's raining, I, I will initiate the auto response control. No. You leave it on the whole time. So that's why you'll be driving along and suddenly there'll be a little glitch in the machine and all of a sudden it will just go on a perfectly dry day. On a perfectly dry day, for no apparent reason. Just uh, because like a seagull <coughs> sneezed in your general direction. Or a fly accidentally decided to graze the windscreen sensor. <laughs> Mental. Parking sensors. Right oh, now, don't get me started. now we could do half an hour on this. At we, least. We're just going, okay? Now, obviously, there's a need for parking sensors. They can be a good thing. They stop you, for example, smashing your front or rear bumper in. It's a good idea in theory. In theory. So why then do they go off at a moment's notice? You're reversing the car. Ah, hang on, what's that? What's that? What's oh, that? oh, oh a, tr a bead of water has oh. trickled down the bumper over the sensor and set off maximum stop mode. Oh, you press no. So what happens? You start trusting them less. You start thinking, oh, I hang on. a bit closer, is, yeah. yeah, is that really a, a solid beep or is it something else over it? Bang, and you're in the, and, that's, and that's it. it. You've, you've shagged your bumper. There is a major fault with rear parking sensors as well. And that is the handily placed skip. <laughs> right? Because. <laughs> Tell me more. Generally speaking, what shape are skips? They're sort of like uh, small at the bottom and then they sort of Go sort of get the, wider, don't and, they? And where on a vehicle are the parking sensors generally located? Generally quite low down. Quite low down. Ah, I know where you're going Do you now. know where I'm going with I it? I see, I see. So you think, I've got parking sensors, I don't have to worry. <laughs> and I wait for the solid tone, reverse back, yeah. Shh. Suddenly a, the rear, the top of the skip appears in the rear window. Stop start technology, right? The answer is stop. Okay, the answer is never start, it's always stop. I'm particularly annoyed about this because as you know, viewers, I hate stop-start technology, but Ferrari, beautiful company that they are, always allowed you to turn off stop-start permanently by just pressing a button, but you didn't have to keep doing it every journey like every other car. However, However. bad news, folks, because the new Ferraris, including the 812 Superfast, no longer allow you to do that. Europe has got its claws into Ferrari at long last, and now you have to turn off stop-start every single journey. journey. Why do I hate stop-start so much? Oh, Damien, oh, but it's saving the planet. It's saving the petrol, and if you're not using as much petrol... Think the, the penguins! Then the Earth is breathing. Otherwise, the Earth is crying. Please help us. Please help the penguins and the monkeys, Damien. <laughs> No, okay? Number one, the amount of carbon dioxide and pollutants coming out of all the cars in the world is nothing compared to the amount coming out of Chinese power stations and cruise ships, okay? Right. It makes no difference that you've got a Ferrari without stop-start to the global environment. It makes no difference whatsoever. You could have 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 Ferraris. It wouldn't make any difference because if you have one cruise ship, that's it, equal. Wow. There's huge polluters going unchecked and you're not doing anything about that, are you? No, exactly. So oh. as usual, I'm right. I think I've pulled a muscle. <laughs> you know those Duracell bunny adverts where there's one that keeps going, and, keep going, going. and going and keep going and going and going? going? This is brilliant. We're gonna be on indicators next. Number two, I come from a generation where if a car suddenly stops whilst you're driving it, it's stalled, possibly broken down. Remember those panic stations of in course. the outside lane yeah. and the car would just stop for no reason. Yeah, or well you stopped at lights. Like, or... oh. Exactly, you see, oh. It, it's oh. terror. It gives, it gives the, terror the, to people like me and Jason. Sweat. If a car cuts out, it's always bad. bad and this is no different. So stop giving us heart attacks. There is no point. I remember the first time I had a stop start incident. It was a Ford Focus. I had no idea it had stop start on it. I got into the drive through, got halfway through the drive through at a, a well known chicken restaurant. And it kicked in. And I honestly, I was like, oh, because I'm boxed now. There's curves each side. I can't get out of the drive through. And the car has physically stopped. Oh my God. Oh my God. I put it into neutral, took my foot off the clutch, and it went boom, and started again. But it took a minute off your life. Oh, at least a minute. Another thing about stop start, your battery has to be in perfect condition yeah, for that's... stop start to work properly. What's going to happen when batteries start to uh, degrade a little bit? No stop start. Well, no, all that happens is it will stop and it will never, never start, start again. Yeah. 
and you've got to go and get your battery charged. So you've got to bear this in mind. It's a new technology. No one knows what's going to happen to it when the cars get a bit older, a bit more ragged. Suddenly, stop-start will just mean unexpected stop. You'll like this one. Yeah. You're driving one of your many cars mm -hmm. and, you're, and the fuel level's low and you go, oh, I need to go and top up my fuel. But you can't remember which side the fuel filler fat yes. is. Yes. And you go like this <laughs> in the in the wing mirror because that's what you do, when you? You want to go? Oh well, I could probably see which. That's side what they're for. Is. They're for right. that, aren't that's they? What they're for. Yeah. Unfortunately, vehicle designers have have made a lovely job of curving the body just where the filler cap is, <laughs> so you can't actually see which side the bugger is. Yep. Even if you lean out, you can't Even see. If you lean out. Now, thankfully, in the Volvo and most Fords, there's a little arrow that tells you which side it is. Where is it? On the on the thing, right? So there's a little oh, arrow. Yep. That says it's that side. Not every car does that, does no. it? No. And there is this fallacy that depending on which side the the hose on the little petrol pump icon is, is what side the petrol filler cap is. But that is nonsense. Pure nonsense. Because they're all Pure on the blooming right hand side, aren't yeah. they? They're all there and yeah. most of them are all over it. So that isn't that's an apocryphal story, that is. There's no such thing. I've lost count of the number of times I've hanging out of the side of a car looking for it if you don't do that you've got to do that drive of shame where you pull onto the forecourt but you don't go into a petrol pump which always makes them think you're about to rob the place yeah yeah and you pull up and then you have to get out the car and, and do look. that sad look around and then they look oh. at you like he's stolen that car he doesn't know which side of petrol cap is exactly or you front it out you pull up to the pump yeah on a wild kind of i'm pretty sure i know which side it is flick a coin then you have to because it's on the wrong side because it always is then you have to drag the petrol hose over the back of the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it won't reach. You've got to try and, and tug it that extra. And, it. and whatever springs they put in those petrol hoses to try and stop them from coming out, you need the force of four elephants to pull the thing across. <laughs> and then it doesn't quite reach, so you have to get back in the car and shut oh, it off. Oh, that's the worst. How about this then? Headlamp washers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of cars have got them. What happens is you engage it, you pull the switch, and all that happens is a load of sputumy foam trickles out of the front, splashes all over the bonnet, and you end up with this bonnet covered in this sort of crustacean. Do you know what? It's actually worse than that. Because most headlight washers are activated when you wash the windscreen. That's true. So you pull the thing to wash your windscreen, yep. and you go, OK, wash the windscreen, sweep, sweep, that's brilliant, and then then they do it. Then you get the sputum <laughs> from the headlight washers that's then plants itself on the screen. Your automatic windscreen wipers kick in. <laughs> leaves this long trail of hot rubber across the windscreen, which you then have to flick it again, and you're into this catch-22 scenario. Nonsense. <laughs> on this particular car, yeah. something that really gets on my nerves. We're in the Volvo. We're in the Volvo. Yeah. Volvo update. Only two recalls since I bought it. It's got this collision detection system. Yeah, which right. sounds good. Safety sounds feature. Good. Safety feature. Well so done. It will auto brake ah. and stop the car. Ah. And it flashes up with big red LEDs across the windscreen. I've had experience of this right. as well. Yeah. Only trouble is, it's a little oversensitive. <laughs> so let's say, for example. Let's say someone breaks in the Northern Hemisphere. Or you're just tootling around the English village. Mm -hmm. And there is a lay-by where other vehicles are parked on a corner, perhaps. The Volvo thinks that you are barreling, barreling towards an accident, into an accident, <laughs> and so will flash up with lots of lights and break the car for you. <laughs> Honestly, it's the most annoying thing in the world, bar none. I hate it. I hate it. Thanks for watching this episode on the things we hate about cars. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments, especially about things you hate on cars. Ding the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.